So today in class we looked at uh, RhinoCam, and we'll be using RhinoCam inside of Rhino to generate a, uh, a G-code which will run the CNC mill for us to make our site model. Um, one thing I did here is I can click the tooling and I loaded all of the tools that are available at Tyler uh, the School of Art at Temple University. Um, and we're typically going to be using here the flat half inch tool that's going to be the for the coarsest level and then uh, eventually the quarter inch. It would be great to use the eighth inch but if I double click this you can see the depth of the tool is only an inch and a quarter and that's just not deep enough uh, for us to do this model. So what I need to do first is to create uh, our stock and to do that I'm going to select everything here and just type bounding box. It creates a box for me that completely covers those objects and using the command move face I'm going to make everything a sixteenth inch, inch bigger. So I'll pull this, uh, I'm going to turn on ortho, one sixteenth inch to the right, one sixteenth inch on the front face, one sixteenth inch on the back face, one sixteenth inch on the far face, and then on the top here. Uh, I'm going to click this corner, go down to the bottom corner, and hit tab. This will keep it vertical, and I'll go 1 16th inch above. Then all I have to do is come to stock, box stock, and say copy model bounding box. It knows that that's a bounding box, and so it'll cover everything we need. It'll say OK. I can actually delete my bounding box now. The, the software knows about it. So if I come here, I can toggle my stock visibility. You can see there's the bounding box. It's a little bit bigger than my model, which is great. The other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, one thing we looked at today in class and that these little indents that separate in the back of these uh, row homes aren't something that we can mill out. If I type circle and go to a two point circle, I can click from this endpoint and let's see along here and our bit, our smallest bit is a quarter inch. Now right here this is a quarter inch bit and you can see it's much much bigger than this pocket would allow. So one thing I'd want to go in and do is to redo this profile in a way that we would be able to mill it. There's no reason to keep this in here. It's just going to cause additional time and we're not going to get a good product out of the mill. But without doing that, we can still make our, our code. So we're going to do a few passes uh, under 3D axis advance. We're going to do a horizontal roughing pass first. Uh, we're going to use a tool that right now we can just do the half inch ball. Um, under the cut parameters, we're going to have a 25% offset. Uh, and a 50% tool diameter uh, distance in the Z. That's fine. Right now this is just totally bulk removing of material. So with that we can go to simulate and we can play that and we can see that it will run through and give us a pretty crude removal of material. That's fine. That's all we needed. Um, next we're going to come back in and add in a horizontal rerough. Now the rerough, um, our tool here, I'm going to use the flat foam only. This is a deeper tool. So I'll say generate. Uh, let's just take a look. Actually, let's do a 10% offset. So 10% offset and then under our cut level, 50% depth. That's fine. So we'll generate a horizontal re-roughing. We can only generate a re-roughing if we've run a simulation. It has to know where material has been removed from. This is still a pretty easy one. So let's go ahead and simulate the re-roughing. You can see it gets us a little bit closer to where we want to be. Um, so now I want to go in and do a hor uh, sorry a parallel. So here under 3D axis, we're going to go parallel finishing. We're going to use that flat foam bit. And our cut parameters, we're going to allow this one to be a 10% offset again. And under uh, this one, we don't actually have to can change the Z. You can see that it's, it's going to follow the contour of the model. So we'll say generate. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated, so it takes a little longer than before. Um, but just like that, we're ready to go. Um, we can simulate our parallel finishing, uh, which is just running parallel to the, you know, kind of one parallel track back and forth across the model. Um, you can see we have a little bit of scalloping that happens here on diagonals. Uh, things that are just totally flat and flush are, are much easier to do. There we go. And the 10% offset gives us a pretty smooth base. You can see that here. We have some as we go up the wall, and it's not so great, but 
we're going to try to take care of those with our next pass. So back to program, we'll program a horizontal finish. Um, again, we'll use that same tool. Uh, cut parameters isn't something we need to deal with, but this time I'm going to say that we're going to go to a 10% tool diameter depth. Um, and we'll generate that. Let's simulate one more time just to follow this along. So here it's kind of tracing the buildings, stepping down little by little, smoothing off those edges. And one thing you'll see is that right where the the, the grade hits the building, that bit, because it's a quarter inch, has to go from the highest point. Um, so it can't really get in and clean up this kind of join line where these two masses come together. And we have these kind of strange bits. So the last thing I want to try to do is to come in with a pencil tracing. And with the pencil tracing, we're going to use that same tool. Um, the clearance plane is about the, the ultimate height there for cut parameters. Um, we can change our step over if we need to. Um, but let's go ahead and just do multiple cuts and we'll say offset 10% and we'll generate this. This is the most complicated that we're going to get with uh, our machining. Uh, so this one takes a little bit longer to generate, so I'm going to pause the video and restart it once it's done. All right, with pencil tracing done, I can go back to simulate and play through that simulation of pencil tracing. What we're looking for is it to clean up this edge. It won't be perfect, but it will be hopefully a little bit better than where we were. You can see it took out some of it, but not all of it. So that's better, and knowing that this is foam, we could definitely come in and just kind of sand this down a little bit. Um, you know, it's not 100% perfect, um, but it's pretty close. Uh, definitely when we have complicated edges like this, the, the mill can only do so much. Um, but from uh, you know arm's length away, it's pretty decent decent shape. If I go over here and I look at our part visibility, we can see what we had given it and what we ended up with. Better than yet, if I go to compare, I can turn on the tolerancing. Essentially, anything we see as green is pretty good. Uh, cyan and orange are acceptable. Red and blue mean that we're we're a little bit further away than we'd like to be, but you know this is still within one thousandth of an inch or one hundredth, sorry. So you can see the majority of our model is green. We have some blue where it couldn't carve in, that makes sense. We have a little bit of red on the sides, that's just a, that's not a big deal because we'll trim that away on our own. Um, but the vast majority of things we see are uh, green, which is good. We have some cyan, uh, which is uh, acceptable. If I come around this side, let's see if we have anything. So. Long and short, we got it pretty close. We got it within a hundredth of an inch of the model we were looking to generate. Um, so we'll stop there. Uh, in our next session, we'll be looking at how to export this code and how to start milling this file up. Thanks.